Local 4 News starts now with a breaking news alert. Local 4 News is following a breaking story about the temporary ban on indoor dining at restaurants in Michigan. A federal judge has denied a request to overturn those restrictions. The Michigan Restaurants and Lodging Association sued the director of the Health and Human Services Department. The state's current three-week pause runs through at least December 8th. We'll keep you posted. Also breaking right now, Kim, the University of Michigan has just canceled this weekend's game against Maryland because of COVID-19 concerns within the Wolverine football program. All team activities had been virtual this week. Well, now practice is on pause until at least Monday. Athletic director says it's seen an increase of players that would be unavailable because of COVID-19. Bernie Smilovitz will tell us more about what happens next here in just a couple of minutes. Yes. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Kimberly Gill along with Devin Scillian. Joining you. Uh, oddly early today because <laughs> of the coronavirus issues in the NFL. We've got NFL football coming up here in about 30 minutes. So up first here in this a special edition of Local 4 News, another big story. The Trump campaign sending attorney Rudolph Giuliani to Michigan's Capitol to testify before a state house panel raising questions about the election process, even though the state's results have already been certified. Michigan, just one of the battleground states the Trump campaign has been targeting. It's asking Wisconsin's Supreme Court to disqualify more than 220,000 votes in heavily Democratic counties. State's Democratic governor told the court the request is a, quote, assault on democracy. Down in Georgia, officials say a recount requested by the president should be finished by tonight's midnight deadline. Here in Michigan, our Mara McDonald previews what's going to happen in Lansing in just a few hours from now. Mara? Right now, the plan is for Giuliani to address that House committee at 6 o'clock in Lansing. So far, the Trump campaign has not had any success with the legal challenges it has filed in Michigan. It's unclear if Giuliani will be bringing new information and accusations tonight or whether it's going to be a rehash of what has already been tried and not gone anywhere. Because there's not a singular voter fraud in one state. This pattern repeats itself in a number of states. The GOP-controlled legislature has committee hearings going in the Senate and the House to look at claims of election irregularities. Yesterday's Senate hearing went on for seven hours with numerous Republican poll watchers making claims of fraud at the TCF Center, but without anything that backs up those claims. So far, GOP leadership has said there has been no information given that would change the outcome of the election. We may get an idea of what Rudy Giuliani is going to tell legislators a little earlier than six o'clock. A press call with Giuliani and Michigan GOP Chairwoman Laura Cox is scheduled for 415. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, we will be monitoring, of course, Giuliani's testimony in Lansing. We'll have live updates for you after the game and a full wrap up later tonight on Local 4 News at 11. Now, many of the suspects in the alleged plot to kidnap Governor Whitmer have been fighting to be released or have their bonds lowered. Today, two more men, two brothers, were in court hoping they might get released right away. Local 4 Sean Lay shows us what happened in court. Sean. Good afternoon, Kimberly and Devin. This hearing was absolutely fascinating. The state really making a strong argument, calling these brothers, the Null brothers, absolute dangers to elected officials, to police, and to the public. And the judge right then and there agreed with the state. And then the judge made a surprise decision. And those brothers, they could be getting out of jail at any moment right now. Judge, this is a uh, political vendetta. These gentlemen, we believe, never left the Walmart parking lot in uh, Cadillac and uh, never provided any material support. A wild bond hearing today for the Null brothers, Michael and William, both charged by the state with supporting terrorism, saying they were deep into the alleged plot to kidnap and kill Governor Whitmer. But attorneys for the brothers asked a judge today to release these twin brothers on the spot, saying they were up north with the group of men now charged with plotting against the governor and allegedly planning to launch a terror attack on the state house. Their argument, the brothers never left Cadillac and did not continue on with that group. You could dismiss this case today and immediately release these individuals as they never left the uh, town of Cadillac. But the attorney general's office says the brothers were being driven to surveil the governor's summer home by an undercover officer also in the car, an informant recording the men, asking the brothers if they wanted to turn back. There is a recording to this effect that has them in the car participating in the surveillance quite actively um, and going with the group to Elk Rapids where the surveillance occurred. 
The judge agreeing with the state on all of this, and he even denied the motion to lower the brothers' $250,000 bond. And then he made a quick decision and said they could post 10% of that assurity bond, $25,000. They could be posting that at any moment. They'll, if they do do that, they'll be released on GPS tethers. They can go back to work as general contractors. The only thing is no guns, and they can't go anywhere near the governor. Fascinating decision, and these guys could be out at any minute. Back to you. All right, Sean, we'll keep you keep updated on it. We appreciate it. As Michigan battles an ongoing coronavirus surge, the world's very first vaccine has now been authorized for use. It just happened in Britain, and it sure feels like a step forward in this pandemic. British regulators have given the go-ahead to the vaccine made by Pfizer and the German company BioNTech. The emergency use authorization comes after a review of clinical trials that show the vaccine to be about 95% effective. Britain expects to have 800,000 doses of the vaccine within days and people should start getting shots as soon as it arrives. Meanwhile, here in the United States, Pfizer is still waiting for emergency use authorization. That is because the FDA does its own analysis of the company's data while British regulators take the results at face value. The FDA will meet uh, December 10th to discuss the Pfizer vaccine. Federal health officials are once again asking Americans to stay home during the holiday season or consider getting tested before and after travel. They made the same request, of course, during Thanksgiving. We're waiting for updated numbers from the state on new daily cases. We'll post that information on our website. Click on Detroit.com as soon as they are released. CDC has reviewed and revised the recommended length of time necessary to quarantine after a coronavirus exposure. Uh, Dr. Frank M. George here to explain why they made this change and what is different now. Doc? Well, hey, Devin, you know, so previously, if you were exposed to a person infected with SARS-CoV-2, the recommendation was that you would quarantine for 14 days. Now, that's based on good evidence that most people will have developed symptoms by day 14. And even if they don't have symptoms, the risk of being infectious past day 14 is also low. The problem is... Asking people to stay home for 14 days with a potential loss of income and all of the inconveniences that quarantine brings, well, that creates a strong disincentive to report an exposure and abide by the recommendation. The alternative that the CDC is offering will hopefully maximize adherence and still reasonably minimize risk. The change the CDC announced is that after an exposure, the recommended quarantine period would shorten to 10 days without testing and be reduced further to seven days if someone has a negative test. The timing of the test from the day of exposure is important. If we test at day five, six or seven and you're negative, um, it's, it's about the model would predict that we, we will we'll define at least 95 percent. That's because the average incubation period for COVID-19 is five days from the time of exposure, and testing in that time frame has the highest yield. Now, there's also good evidence that after day seven, the infectiousness of a person begins to decline significantly, and a 10-day quarantine would contain the majority of individuals who are infected, as explained it. here by Bottom CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield. If you isolate for 10 days, that the probability that you will um, start replicating a virus after that is about 1%. And so it's a balance. It's not that 14 days is bad. It's just that how does society want to balance it? And balance is the important point. These strategies will miss some people. And here's the bottom line. The CDC is not saying that 14 days is wrong. They are still recommending it whenever possible, but now there are more options. Well, to be clear, the seven and 10 day options are only if a person doesn't have any symptoms. That's a really important part of this, right? Yeah, absolutely. The purpose, of course, of quarantine is to prevent you from spreading the virus after you've been exposed, but right. before you develop any symptoms. If you yeah. do develop symptoms, you should actually just go get tested. Sure thing. All right, Doc. The U.S. and Canadian Coast Guards are working to free a freighter that ran aground in the Detroit River. Sky 4 over the scene this morning, just south of Boblo Island. The Harvest Spirit ran aground in the river's Livingstone Channel. The ship is owned by a Canadian company and had just left the dock at Zug Island. No doubt it's the busiest time of the year for the U.S. Post Office, and it is responding with expanded weekend hours. 
17 post offices throughout Metro Detroit have extended Saturday hours. Also, they'll be open on December 6th and 13th, notable because those are both Sundays. Uh, hours do vary, so we've posted a complete list of the offices and their hours at clickondetroit.com. Just head to the local news page. Still ahead, Michigan State University says it's looking to boost graduation rates. A new decision will affect where thousands of students will live. More on that just ahead. Also, here's Rod Maloney. It was roughly a month ago that the governor made an announcement about a special education program. We think that we can change lives for hundreds and maybe thousands of people in this state. First line responders now have an opportunity and know exactly where to go to make this happen. We'll let you know where. Two points for a reversal. Look at all this sunshine after yesterday's snow. It has helped out with temperatures somewhat. We'll see where we go from here as the weekend approaches. Next. The second wave of COVID